economic growth because at the end of the day the taxes that we earn in this country that end up going to health and to education the pie needs to grow to economic growth it's, it's kind of a catch-22 right, and, right. And, and 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 if you look at the the, the last 10 years the last seven years taxes the, the tax package has been growing yes yeah. but yes. it's not fast it's enough not, not it's fast never fast enough, enough. Absolutely. So we have to keep growing that Absolutely. pie so that we can be able to allocate enough based on the social issue. Jaindi Kisora writes an article this, uh, in, in the papers today about, about the, the confusion that there is in as far as devaluation is concerned. And also, Joe Igwe on our Facebook page info, you know, asked a question. Uh, now that this blueprint was formulated before the county system in the current constitutional dispensation, how is your plan relevant to the challenges as you have seen even Parliament is yet to agree on the implementation? Um, uh, you know, t trying to avoid sites. Um, but your thoughts basically in as far as the debate that pertains to devolution mm. and, and, and public financing for that matter, mm. um, in, in, in as far as its impact on realizing Vision 2030. Right. Let me first of all, Vision 2030, by the way, is a, is, is a vision. And yes. the vision is still very tangible and dynamic. Right. right. Um, and, it's, and a lot of the, I told you, the social pillar, for instance, yes. everything that is in the Bill of Rights, Chapter 4, yes. is actually what the social pillar talks about. So alignment is there. We do have to now make it a lot more county specific. Right. That work is going mm. on. Um, now, devolution. <laughs> De devolution is interesting, but my, 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 my view is that Kenyans did two things, voted very strongly for two things, and both things are equally important. One, they voted for devolution, mm -hmm. which was to devolve power and the setting of priority right. to the countries. To the country. But they simultaneously voted for one state yes. called Kenya. Mm -hmm. So we have a national government and we have county governments. Now, we need to do a much, and Kenyans, I, I implore Kenyans to actually think very critically um, about what the role of national government will be and the role of county governments will be. And if you look at the constitution, it's quite pretty well designed. Mm -hmm. I mean, it envisages the gradual, um, the gradual transfer of functions and responsibilities to the county government because it understands that today the capacities are the national government. So if it is healthcare, agriculture, all that is supposed to go to the counties. But you have got to build that capacity in the you counties. You have to build that capacity. It is, would be irresponsible. You know, when people of a particular county have been receiving certain services, whether they be healthcare services or agriculture extension services, to suddenly one day say, okay, fine, you're on your own, county A, take over. Actually, the constitution mandates the national government to build that capacity. It's actually an obligation of the national government to, to build, build the capacity. capacity in all those counties. The thing is, it won't happen overnight. Sure. Okay? And so it's supposed, that's why it's a gradual sure. transfer of functions. And because at the end of the day, the citizen cannot be left in a lurch. Mm -hmm. You can't have. You know, it's like uh, if you watch the 4x100 yes. uh, <laughs> exactly. relay race right, in, right. in South mm, Korea. Yes. So what the Americans do. Yes, think. yes. You know, passing the baton, you can't afford to drop the baton. Right? So the handover from national government to county government has to be done carefully. So the debate, say, on the public financial management, it's a good debate. And we shouldn't take sides. Treasury has one view. Uh, local government has one view. I think they're both legitimate. You know, one view is, come on, uh, let's make sure that you transfer all these powers, right, to, to the county <laughs> government. The other view is we're talking about a public financial management system. And Kenya, by the way, has a pretty mature public financial management system that, yes. is, that, that, ha that predates our independence. It has developed and matured through the colonial period to the 50 years of independence. And whatever you want to say, about it's one of the best in Africa. You cannot just kill it, right? And say county start from scratch. It has to be very carefully transferred uh, to the county governments. And then the constitution also envisages national guidance, right? National yes. policy. National uh -huh. policy is national. Execution is county. Mm -hmm. Now, understanding that and making sure every bill understands that is very, very important. Absolutely. There will be different philosophical viewpoints. They must all be carefully debated. We must all not take sides. Let's be balanced. Let's understand what is the concern of the Treasury, what is the concern of uh, local government. And not just the public financial management bill. Devolution generally of all services must mm -hmm. be very carefully done. But eventually, counties must be the executors. Yes, okay? absolutely. That's why we'll have governors. And the national government must be setting policy. Because at the end of the day, we, shall, we shouldn't have a balkanized country. We want a country that That's is true. still Kenyan. One of the things I'm concerned about is the 30% yes, rule. Yes, yes. We've said, and I think it's a good rule, that in public service, no single community should have more than 30% in any That's true. organ of public mm. service. That should be true, in my view, at the national level. And at the county and level. At the county level. There's no reason why <laughs> Kiambu, for instance, public servants should all be Kikuyu. No. No, no more than 30% should be. That is my personal view. But, 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 but I think it's a that constitutional that principle. It, it's but I think that's exactly what is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> because we're talking about our, which is sad, our right? men, our people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, social culture, you know, a lot of people are expecting, you know, I, I, unfortunately in my view, and I'm concerned about that, I expect now we're going to our own county to be just 
as our people, our people, which is wrong which because is wrong. even have a still must remain right? Kenyan. But the principle is constitutional that no more than 30% of any community in public service, in any branch of public service. Absolutely. We must remain competitive national counties, but where the local set priorities and the locals run their own. Absolutely. That balance uh, is difficult. To absolutely. Do. A couple of questions before we end up. Um, one is um, your thoughts about um, our immigration laws, and I'm sure you know where I'm heading with this one. In terms of, uh, we've had an influx of um, uh, uh, Somalis, um, Ethiopians, and, and a lot of respect, of course, to our indigenous ones, who also are complaining in terms of opportunities for um, economic economic uh, ownership. Um, your thoughts about that in how it impacts on Vision 2030? We've got um, people who've come here, and you know, our our, our real estate is going up, not because um, it is going up for a certain reason, <laughs> but because there's some people who are able to take that price up, um, making it difficult for the indigenous Kenyans to own property mm -hmm. in this country. It could be a na naive way of thinking, but um, I would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, are we overlooking certain aspects of you our know, laws you know, you to know, allow foreigners to come and own? You know, if Kenya? you specifically consider the Somali issue, yes, it's a very com complex one uh, because. The question you're asking, as you're asking it, and people ask that question. I see a lot of people asking about piracy, money yes. coming to a real estate, all these refugees coming in. We now have a half a million of them yes. uh, in Dadaab. Yes. How is that affecting us? <laughs> and that's a very Kenyan perspective, and legitimately so. And the Kenyan government has been very, very uh, protective right, of its sovereignty and its economy and its social political situation. Right. But the international community actually has a different perspective. They are looking at what's happening in Somalia with famine. Uh, three million people are yeah. starving right now inside Somalia. Right. Half a million are in Kenya. Yes. Similar number almost, I think, or slightly less in Ethiopia. And more could be coming. They're looking at it and saying, that's an international crisis. It's a disaster. These people are dying. And that's their singular focus. And they're saying, you Kenyans, people, how? Do more to help me. And we're saying, wait a minute. We have to. We've got that up. We've got, right? yes. Which is half a million people. Third right. largest now. Yes. City in Kenya. Yes. And <laughs> we've got our own issues in terms of resources for our own people, not to mention the extra half a million people that we must address. Look after. But we are also part of the international community, right? We right, must, yes. and these are our neighbors. And the Somali problem, we regionally must resolve it for the sake of the region. So I think that we're trying to do our best as a government and as a country to support our brothers, because half a million people in Dadaab is a major, major uh, resource constraint. Those people, have, the kids have been there since 1991, by the way. They've grown up there. Okay, they have to go to school, they have to eat, and somehow Kenyans are contributing to this. So our challenge is to the international community is to help us with this. It's cannot, it's not a Kenyan problem. No, it's not. No. It's the entire world. Absolutely, problem. we can't afford to do this, and that is why uh, the prime minister has actually called a, a regional conference uh, to actually specifically address the issue of the Horn of Africa problem, this famine problem. Look at areas like Dadaab and say, how do we handle this? Because if you have kids who are growing up in mm. Dadaab, because the big Kenyans here Dadaab right. don't realize it's a whole city there. It is. A it is. People. It is. And it's been there for a long time. Okay, it's grown to half a million just over the last few months. But w when you have a situation where a Somali kid was born perhaps in Dadaab, grew up in Dadaab, is 20 years old, starts life in Dadaab, is that a Somali or a Kenyan? Right? And the memories that kid has, will they be of Kenya or Somalia? Or Somalia? These are things that we have to face as a country. But I think. Uh, what Kenya is doing, what the Prime Minister's uh, conference is going to be doing is to tell the uh, international community, this is our mm. collective problem. It happens to be situated in Kenya right now, and Kenya is doing its part. And mm. we, even as Kenyans, deal, we need to be humanitarian. We can't just yes. really focus on the challenges to us. What we should do is what I think is happening, is be humanitarian, make sure that we do accept the refugees and support them, but be careful about the issues you're raising about infiltration into this country by foreigners, and I think that's being done. That's, that's why we have the, mm. uh, the camp in the right. dab. Mm. And, mm. And, and, and the issue of uh, prices, I don't know. So, uh, statistically, <laughs> it hasn't been yet. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Finally, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, what do you think of uh, grassroots uh, extension? Mm -hmm. Sometimes back in the 70s and 60s, extension services were very effective. These days, uh, even AI is not there. Uh, you'll never see an agricultural person going to tell farmers what to do. Mm. Well, uh, that's, because that's, that's, that's crucial that's to That's a question you've debated yes. with the minister. Uh, you know, yes. something happened in the early 90s. This privatization yes. thing, we may have taken it too far. Mm. You know, mm. so it was World Bank thing. Well, exactly. Mm. When World Bank came Structural and said privatize everything, yeah. what people don't realize is many Structural things. Structural adjustment. What you're talking about, the extension services, AI, yes. the, the veterinary office, yes. that was yes. then privatized. And it hasn't worked. No. So I do think we need to revisit uh, 
especially in, the, in view of food security, some of those services Absolutely. to farmers, whether it is uh, livestock farmers or agrarian farmers, yeah. to get some technical support from the government. I saw it. Yeah. Final question. Fine. I know we're running out of time, but um, uh, somebody told me to ask. You, there is, there is also an environmental component within Vision 2030. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of concern about um, the, the speed uh, <laughs> at which trees are being cut now. Um, is is that a is, is is that within the lines or the confines of the laws that govern environmental policy? Is that, or? Is, is that with respect to infrastructure? Yes. Yeah, well, I <laughs> <laughs> because exactly. I know trees are being cut to build our roads, um, uh, but there's also. Uh, the, the, the goal of Vision 2030 is to have 10% forest cover yes. by the year 2050. Yes. And by the way, I'll tell you something. We've had an increase of about 1% over the last three years wow. in forest cover. That's it. You mm -hmm. know, because uh, the focus has been on the water towers, mm -hmm. the Abadeas, Mount Kenya, Cherangani, uh, Mau, and Mount Elgo, right? To make sure that at least those ones are completely restored. But we also need to move to uh, more private, you know, our schools, our personal farms, mm -hmm have tree planting everywhere, and a culture right. of tree planting. Right. And beyond that, a culture of terracing. You know, remember also when yes. I was growing up in high school? Yes. Oh, yeah. We used to do terracing and yeah. Gabion. We have to go back to that. And by the way, that is not something that is backward. It's done even in places like Israel. No, but the is uh, in Kenya anymore. We now need to start <laughs> those programs again to uh, conserve soil, conserve moisture, retain moisture on the ground. The many things need to be done, but they're all part of the social pillar uh, of Vision 2030. It's not possible to uh, detail everything in an right. interview like this, Absolutely. And, 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 and they're mainly implemented that they're taking all these various programs and projects. But environment is very important. Th I should say this, next MTP, the second MTP, we should uh -huh. actually have a climate change assessment Compl on all uh, the Vision 2030 projects Absolutely. to address the environment. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much for that. Thank, 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 thank you. You are watching at the Public Show live on Citizen TV. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Was it to that one? Thank you.